From Atlanta to the world, a view like no other, The Christian View. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, with co-hosts Aisha Smith-Dancy, Sandra O'Neill, Dr. Lee Adams, Trudy Davies-Davis, Monica Matthews, Isaac Hernandez, and Caitlin Bryan. Empowering and inspiring, The Christian View. For being here. Thank you at home for watching. And you know, you can now hear us on Faith Talk Atlanta on Saturdays and All Nations Radio. So you can listen to us while you're in the car. We also have a podcast coming out. It should be out in about a week. So stay tuned for that. Um, I've got some amazing people up here with me today. I have Caitlin and Lee, Pastor Lee, Sandra and Monica. So thank y'all for being here. Awesome. Check out their ministries. They're doing amazing things for the kingdom other than pouring into the Christian view. So um, I'm excited for what God's gonna do um, today and every day. So thank y'all. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Yes. So Lee, a couple weeks ago, we, um, we talked about the dying church and how hundreds of churches were dying every, yeah. every year. Um, and I heard re the other day, just this little sweet church down where I live just has to close its doors. Wow. Um, and so times are changing. Things are changing. Um, Franklin, um, Franklin Graham said a post the other day, he said, as we approach this new decade, the biggest threat to our nation is not a cyber attack or a new cold war, but the turning away from God, which will cause his hands to be removed from us. And that's talked about in Isaiah. Um, so the biggest threat to our country and to any country is not from without, but it's from within. And so my question to start off with is, is our country headed? Are we in a dying state or are we in a growing state? Wow, that's amazing. Um, as I was researching, I came across an article that stated, um, it said, America is dead, but long live the United States. Okay. Meaning when you look at perspective of, especially like America, the beautiful, mm -hmm. the patriotism that we used to once exhibit in our country, right. a lot of people feel like that's no longer um, valid. But now that people are really kind of going more into an individualistic mm -hmm. type approach where, you know, in the United States, Florida's doing this, Georgia this, mm -hmm. I live here, and we're not thinking from the standpoint mm -hmm. of one country. So maybe, you know, from that perspective, if we look at it, just the whole overall being unified as America, right. I think that whole concept it's, maybe. It's changing. Yes. What about just the lack of respect for our government, for each other, for scripture? I mean, people, they're starting to rewrite, they want to rewrite what our family Fathers found our nation on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the, definitely the reverence for a God has mm -hmm. really gone out the window. And I think as you know, we look at how we as a country have approached things over the last 20, 30 years, we really can see how it kind of has dwindled out, really just family values have dwindled. There are so many things mm -hmm. that I feel contribute to it that we are really moved from being Although we've never truly said we were a collective type society, but we really are individualistic. Right, right. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think that more than, I think that we are at a turning point, mm -hmm. a turning point to say we can move forward right. as the United States of America or move forward as the America as yes. we were. I think we're at a turning point to where we as a country are saying, what are we? Mm -hmm. yes. We've done this for years. We don't exactly want to do it that way anymore. We want to move forward. And we're at this turning point. So I think it's a very interesting time to be alive, you know, as a Christian and right. as an American citizen to see wh which direction we're going to go. Because I think that we're at a turning point to where we can go one direction or another. It's yes. going to be interesting, but a great time to pray. Right, to, exactly. To go in the right direction. I think also that there is an entire generation that has not seen what war looks like yes. and what the sweat and tears and the blood in the veins of right. people that we have lost. There was an area, there was a decade, there was a time that you, your child, your son would leave and you never knew if right. he was going to come back. Right. We haven't experienced right. that. We are in a society and a culture that we have had it really easy from what our forefathers have actually yeah. put, yes. founded. So I think in a time, God has a way of getting our attention. Yes, he does. And yes. when he gets our attention, he goes, do not separate yourselves from me mm -hmm. because if you start thinking we've got it under control there's going to be a shift yes. and we've got to run to him with open arms because if we remove ourselves mm -hmm. from God and the founding Christian principles right. there will be recompense. Yes. You know that's funny that you say that because my son he's 14 he came home the other day and there was a whole bunch of things going on in the media and he said mom is there going to be a draft? 
and and what and what wow. do I do? Like wow. he was he yeah. was he was scared. He was it was it was on ma you know majorly on his right. mind. What what do, what do I do, mom? And mm -hmm. you know I tried to walk him through it and explain the process. And you know he's fourteen, but you know they yes. do, our gen some yes. generations have forgotten yes. what what our forefathers have yeah. fought for. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we've looked to policy to uh, and to man through mm -hmm. policy to dictate kind of the tenets of the country, which, mm -hmm. which we have, but the underpinnings of the country from our founding fathers has always been, they knew that liberty does not rest um, at, its, at its base foundation in the heart of man. Right. That's why we have unalienable rights. Mm -hmm. So that was established from the foundation. And it's taken us, uh, you know, over 200 years to get to a place where everyone's um, capable of exercising those rights equitably right. to an extent. Mm -hmm. We're still not as equitable as we could be in this country with our rights. Um, but I think if we don't come from the place of God has given you your identity yes. Yes. as yes. a created being, you're going to continue to look for people that you can elect mm -hmm. who yes. will uh, substantiate your own existence. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where the enemy gets in to say, well, this is who you are. We need a special class for this. Yes. We need right. a special class for that. And it causes division because other people are like, well, wait a minute. Aren't we all special, like, right. to God? Yes. Well, and I think that's the point. We've got a lot of talking heads out there. Right. And what we need to do is open up the Word of yes. God yes. and see right. what the Holy Spirit is going to talk to us and, and just corroborate right. what they are saying, to what God's point of view right. is. Right. And that's where we're going to find the answer, and that's where we're going to find the yeah. rest and the peace. Yes. Right. right. And it's, it's political. Uh, Political views get skewed in with biblical views. Mm -hmm. We have to learn how to separate the two and, and understand them. Yes. Right. Good point. Good point. Stay with us. We'll be right back here at The Christian View. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back to The Christian View. We're having a great discussion today on the topic of the dying nation. And before we went to close a second ago, we were talking about the identity mm -hmm. and kind of the identity crisis we're yes. having in the U.S., which I think kind of filters into all the other issues that we're having. So, Monica, let's just talk a little bit more on the identity crisis in the U.S. So I feel like, you know, if you're going to go back to God, you know, we like to just stamp things with, well, God says that if his children who are called by his name will just repent and pray, then he'll answer us and it'll be great. And I think what he's calling us to during these times of wheat and chaff and identity, you know, identity crises from our own biological identity to who we associate with politically to who our church pastors are and mega churches versus the small church and no church at all, transdenominational, non-denominational, Catholicism, all of that. I feel like he's saying, hold it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity to get to know me as your right. father, yes. your father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Because what we, what we tend to do historically is whenever things become lawless and our identity is floundering, we go straight for religion Yes, mm -hmm. and it kills the letter mm -hmm. of the law kills. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like he's saying to us, I'm a merciful father. My, my loving kindness lasts for generations. Yes. Like I said, I would be angry with you mm -hmm. no more. Mm -hmm. So it's like, come home, mm -hmm. but you got half the church saying you're all going to hell because you do this, this, and that, right. and you vote for this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. Or you've got the other church saying, let's be codependent with each other mm -hmm. and call that which is evil good and that which is good evil. Right, mm -hmm. right. And so I love my former, my late pastors. Mm -hmm. That was his yeah. trademark where it was like codependency is calling that which is good right. evil. Mm -hmm. And it's in good, in evil good. You, mm -hmm. you jump in, you know, as a nation with uh, humanism, secularism, mm -hmm. well, maybe we should be this way, but it's what would Jesus do with the transgenders? And it's like, well, he would minister to them. Yes. That would be the first place. And he, he, would, he would love them. He right. would minister them, love them. Right. He'd probably have them over for dinner. Correct. Right. So if we don't yeah. settle, mm -hmm. to answer your question succinctly, if we don't settle it in our hearts that God was the author yes. of this country, God, not our founding fathers, yes. we were birthed in his mind and his heart mm -hmm. first. Yes. We're going to constantly seek for identity and out, things outside yes. of us. Mm -hmm. And all those things that we seek outside of Christ will fail. Right. Yeah. They will fail and they will pass away. But let's go to, let's go, if I, Isaiah 520 talks about calling wrong, right, and right, wrong. And I feel like we are, yes. we're there. We are calling good, evil, and evil, and evil, bad. Yeah. I said that wrong, didn't I? But we are doing that. We are, we, 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 we've got it backwards right now. And we need to bring it back yes. to this is right and this is wrong. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Bible says, and this is not what the Bible says. Right. And just because we say a, a statement right versus wrong does not mean 
that we are exempt from it. Right. You know, and I think a lot right. of the times mm -hmm. when we're talking to others that are not Christian, that don't understand the faith, they feel that judgment. Right. Mm -hmm. Not that we're trying to be judgmental, yes. it's just, we're just speaking. So the, 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 the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Sin is a mistake. It could be whichever mistake. Mm -hmm. You can be transgender, mm -hmm. you can be, right. you, you could lie, you can murder. We are all equal at the foot mm -hmm. of the cross with our sin. Praise yes, God I was gonna... for, the su for the blood of Jesus right. Christ that covers all of us mm -hmm. from that, right? Yeah, and for His grace that's new every day, His mm -hmm. mercy. So the thing, if we get back to the concept of righteousness, mm -hmm. yeah. the Word teaches us that righteousness exalts a nation, mm -hmm. but I think that if we would get back to that and really begin to allow people to walk in their truths, mm -hmm. I think more mm -hmm. um, what we're seeing in our country is that people are, there's a fear for people to really stand for what they really believe right, in right. because now you become the outlier, the norm in our country is almost where we're calling wrong right mm -hmm. versus right. calling right, you know, the, those things. Right. So right. people are people are more inclined not to just sometimes stand up for what. But people do. have become their own truth too. Yes. So true. they don't. They're not well, saying what no the Bible says. Light on the hill, mm -hmm. right. like our lights under a bushel yes. right. as the church, because mm -hmm. we are being condemned for actually being harbingers of the truth. Yes. Right. Um, and I think that happens because. The truth has always been scary. The yes. truth has always <laughs> yes. been something yes. that yes. the world the has to get rid of, right? right? But instead of standing, you know, I've said that to my mm -hmm. Jewish brothers and sisters on my show just recently. Mm -hmm. I was like, what are you doing hiding? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like without you, I don't have a savior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like your, that, and that is your identity. As a Jew, that is your identity, it's your birthright. But I think we, we hide out of fear. Yeah. Fear of, yeah. okay, what if I stand fear up and, 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 yeah, fear of rejection. Now I stand fear up. of death. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. It's true. You can't be mm -hmm. bound by opinion. We have to separate right. the truth and be fearless to stand yes. in what we believe in. We can't bow down to the opinions yes. of others, but stand firm in our convictions. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we, because what, what Monica was saying, we're not strong in our identity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we don't feel firm enough because if you ask most Christians, they just believe it because they believe yes. it, but right. they don't know how to defend it. They and I think it. that, you know, there are political statements. We try to be politically mm -hmm. correct, but there are biblical statements that we have to stand in. And right. it's truth that will set us free, not opinion. Right. Well, and I think it's we have to know. So yeah. it's, it's one thing to know. Yeah. Our pastor put it this way a couple weeks ago. It's one thing to know, but then to actually know exactly. yeah. that you know, mm -hmm. that you know that Jesus Christ is going to come. He's going to right. bridge the gap for you. He's right. going to help you and that the truth is really true. Well, I think if we could, I love what you just said, if we could defend the truth. And, but my thing is you're defending the truth so that whatever lie someone else is caught in, mm -hmm. you're, you can pull them out of that yes. snare, yes. right? Yes. As opposed to we appear to be like the Bible thumpers beating right. the crap out of everybody with the truth, right. and it becomes a weapon as opposed mm -hmm. to a salve. And or a discipleship, right. opportunity, right. Right. an yes. opportunity mm -hmm. to disciple, yes. an opportunity to bring people to the fold. Right. And right. not only that, going back to the dying nation, what I was also thinking is the fact that when we're coming to the nation, immigrants, mm -hmm. I'm from Peru, when you come to the United States, of America, you come and you become you you, you yes. become you become part of the culture. Mm -hmm. My country, that's where I was born, but I'm seeing a lot of. Um, di division in the yes. sense of the patriotism. Oh, but I have to stand for Peru or my country of mm -hmm. birth. Well, you're here. Right. Yes. You're here, and this is where God has brought you. Right. And mm -hmm. this is the 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 country that you chose. Right. Yes. Right. Um, right. 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 So I think that mentality has changed a little mm -hmm. bit and has brought dis discord. Discord, and people just yeah. don't know who to stand for right. or what right. to stand for. So that just brings discord. It brings division. You know, it exactly. brings lack of trust. Yes. You know? Exactly. So. That's why we have to have a lot more conversations. Right. Instead of. Arguing. I agree. Yeah. Stay with us. We'll be right back here at the Christian View. Discussion on a, on a hard topic called the dying nation. And you know, Caitlin, if history repeats itself, you can go back and look at the Israelites and how when they turned their backs on God, yeah. you know, what happened? Right. He it took his hand off of them. Exactly. Right. So let's talk about, we've talked a little bit about how we've called wrong right and kind of forgotten the truth. So how do we bring it back? How do we bring back the reverence to God? You know, he's a holy, righteous mm -hmm. God. So how do we bring our country back? Yes. That's a so, loaded question, but yeah. very loaded. Yeah. I was like, solve the problem. <laughs> okay, like, okay, I got it. Right you now. got it. I know you do. Yeah. 
Well, uh, the first thing I want to say is regarding the Israelites, you know, in an earlier episode, we talked about legalism and in our country, I feel like all that has gotten like mixed in with politics right. and religion and different stuff. And I love, even though the Israelites did turn away and God took his hands off them, I love the scripture in Isaiah where it says his anger was there, but his hand was outstretched yes. still. Yes. And I think that we have to remember that. But one of the key phrases as I was thinking about this is honor, mm -hmm. you know, honor, I love the statement that says honor is a personal standard, not a conditional choice. And as a nation, we have turned to the fact that it's conditional. I think if we would honor people and understand people mm -hmm. that that lack of reverence, we just want our opinion. It makes right. me think of the story in first Samuel where Hannah was in the temple. I read an article. It was very interesting. Yeah. Hannah was in the temple and she was crying out because she wanted a child. And Eli, the priest comes in and he goes, woman, you're drunk. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I heard that and I was like, Babe, I would have looked at the priest and been like, call me woman one more time. Right. But she <laughs> right. was like, okay, no, I'm not drunk. I want a baby. She honored the priest yes. and she was given a son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think in this country, we miss out on a lot because we don't know how to honor people right. of, with different opinions mm -hmm. and we don't know how to honor one another. Yes. And it all comes down to honor. So what we need to do is learn how to honor, it, you know, and that's the breakdown of the home. My parents always right. told me to honor, but we don't have that. So as a nation, we have to come together and choose honor. Right. I mean, they're making, they're doing training courses on how to teach your kids to yes. say yes, ma'am, yes. no, ma'am. I mean, yes. it's, we have come yes. so far from where we used yes. to be, yeah, I, you know, it's, so, it, it's not well, that people, hard to say yes, sir, no, sir. Right. But I think people, they begin to see the reverence, what, we, what we're talking more about reverence as a type of bondage. Right. And right. I think that's where we've gotten mm -hmm. into and we've looked at it the way as it's, it's taken away some freedom or some liberty that you have. But we have to understand that we are constrained by the word of God. The gospel constrains us. So therefore even tells us don't use your liberty as a stumbling right. block. Yeah. So if we go so far as to think that we have all these freedoms mm -hmm. and we can do what we want to do, disrespect authority, disrespect the president, right. disrespect the country. We have, we're going to stand right. in reverence with God with these things, but no one is teaching people that anymore. It's just more right. like, you There's know, no consequence no. for, for the disrespect exactly. or the lack of disrespect yes. in our country. Exactly. Right. Well, I think so we've good. opted out as Christians. We, we have abdicated our authority in our mm -hmm. homes yes. uh, to not only our pastors, Mm -hmm. And our pastors have let us down because you're human and it happens. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we've abdicated authority to the government, to the powers that be. Um, and I th you brought up a very good point during our break about why people come to this country. And as mm -hmm. an immigrant, my mother's an immigrant, my father was too. You have to ask yourself, why are you coming here? Yes. And I think the, the basic mm -hmm. principle, like you said, people don't know what it's like to be at war right. in this generation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are fleeing religious persecution in yes. other uh, areas of the world. Well, what is what is our religious base here? It's all rooted in liberty, yes. mm -hmm. it's all rooted in liberty. Yes. Um, and back to your point, you know, my liberty cannot encroach upon yours. Yes. And, it, and it's that, that give and that take and that mm -hmm. honor. What a great mm -hmm. point, right. yeah. you know, to mm -hmm. honor God first mm -hmm. right. and he softens our hearts. Mm -hmm. I think too, Trudy, mm -hmm. what we're seeing is lawlessness in the world and right. the word tells us that in the latter days, men's hearts will right. wax yes. cold because of the lawlessness. Mm -hmm. So you have to guard your heart perpetually yes. and pray for people who are ensnared yes. Yes. in their own devices. And we have to guard ourselves from becoming complacent. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, we can yes. become, and we, we're afraid to speak up, some of us, we you know, we, we become Become complacent, we come set in our ways, and we're just afraid to rock the boat. And I think it's time that we kind of get out of the corner. Yep, I, right? I think so. And it falls also to parenting. Mm -hmm. You know, I always go back there. There's a generation that has gone before us that has had an outsourced type of parenting mm -hmm. mentality. Right. They really here, just like yes. you said, Monica, the church will handle the spirituality. Right. I'm going to go ahead and ballet here. The, just outsource mm -hmm. everything. We're good. Mm -hmm. But it's our responsibility right. as parents mm -hmm. to make sure the soil and the roots mm -hmm. are there to grow deep and point these right. young children to Christ and to the founding. There's a generation that completely does not know that our forefathers came here right. mm -hmm. because of religious persecution. Yes. Right. Have no idea. They're right. blinded and they're blinded that they've been kept silent. Mm -hmm. So then 
people and it's can such a rewrite great, the story yeah. of America. Yes, such exactly. a great tool of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I yes. think about I think about the family, and the family is so busy. Yes. You know, how many times do right. you sit down and actually have dinner, right. or have lunch, mm -hmm. or have breakfast, and, and spend time talking about the topics that right. are at hand? We've gotten so busy and out of touch. Well, with this, I was I was reading an article, and it was doing research on the dynamics between the different generations, and it was looking at generations like maybe in our age group or older, mm -hmm. and it was saying how we have more patriotism, you'll probably find us more, you know, having more reverence for the flag right. and different things that represent our country. But then when you get to the younger generation, their loyalty is more toward equality mm -hmm. and opportunity mm -hmm. right. because, you know, that is the way we have taught right. them, you right. know, everything, you know, America is for you to live your dream, you to be your best self, all these opportunities mm -hmm. here for you, for you, for you, for you. But it's like, we're not asking anymore, you know, what can I do for the country? Right. It's more, what can the country do for you me? You have a very right. angry mm -hmm. generation yes. as yes. well. You have a mm -hmm. fatherless generation. Yes. And right. so not only are we fatherless in spirit, we're fatherless legitimately in our homes. Mm -hmm. right. So these kids are looking for a connection it's for a family right. on TikTok, on social media yes. apps, on yeah. all of that. But I'm going to tell you guys something. When I ask my Twitter followers, I'm like, are we dying? It was it's all over the board. Yeah. Are we right. dying? But a lot of people said no. Speak life yes. over our nation yes. instead exactly. of doom and well, gloom. Well, that's, that's the thing. I think it, we, we respect, speak life. Yes. I and mean, what else can we do? What else can we, the five of us, or the, the audience are watching TV, what can we do to help it to grow again? I think it comes down to, in 2 Corinthians, it talks about you are ambassadors mm -hmm. for Christ. Right. And we've just been couch potatoes. Right. Yeah. And so, for lack of a better term, yeah. and we have got to get out and be ambassadors. Right. Ambassadors speak on behalf of the yes. kingdom. Ambassadors yes. speak on behalf of things. And we don't, ha we have a breakdown of the home, mm -hmm. but the church needs to quit trying to blend in with the world right. and actually yeah. be a light because yes. obviously mm -hmm. we're That's confused. The, the world doesn't <laughs> have right. the answers, yeah. Yeah. but the church needs to quit mixing yes. it up and right. start getting it together to be in. And I do think mm -hmm. they don't have all the answers, but none of us have all the answers, mm -hmm. and but we know who has all the answers. Yeah, exactly. And so spending time at the foot of the cross where all the answers And believe it or not, found. this generation coming up right now, they're seeking. Yes. 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 Yeah. They're going mm -hmm. to find. Yes. 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 Right. And what will they find? The Lord, right. truth, and we yeah. need to make sure they like find the that. truth, right. not sure everyone else's right. truth. Yeah. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And we need to make sure they make find sure it's that. Yeah. yeah, we need to be on the forefronts and on our knees yes. and at home, so that we yeah. can be the voice of the lost exactly. generation. Stay with us. We'll be right back here at the Christian View. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the Christian View. We've had a great discussion today. Thank you all for being here. You're and thank you all for your hearts. Y'all follow us on social media, like us on Twitter and Facebook and check out our website. And just remember that God loves you. He has a great plan for you and he really wants to spend time with you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.